I'm working on the the wedge for the main blade of the dado plane. So what I have here is a simple jig. You see there's a little scuff mark where this was compressed. So maybe I'll take that away. That that will disappear when I change the taper. This will be, let's see, maybe one shot. Let me lighten this cut. Shorten this. So there's no collision. We get a proper fit. All right, I got a little more fitting and fussing, but that's the idea. So I just roughed out the the wedge for the knicker on the dado plane. So I'm going to start shaping that. I got a rat tail file and some of the plane makers floats. That's how I usually do it. Nothing fancy. I cut it out with a coping saw. Okay, see how it looks, see if it'll hold the knicker in. Do a little tap with the hammer. That nick is secure. That's going to hold it real well. Okay. All right, one wedge down. One more to go. Looks all right. All right, I'm set up to... Uh Fire it. 
Stinger shoots standing by. I hold the blade with a clamp so I can let it go. And it will stay. I got my canola oil right here. Okay, safe, secure, everything is in order, in the oven for one hour at 400 on a wire rack so the air circulates. I'm ready to do some test cuts with a couple of the planes, in fact all four of them. So. Um, there's still a lot of work to do on them, but they're cut to length and the blades are done. So I want to just make some footage of them and uh, I'll finish them up at a later time when I can go outside. I'm snowed in right now. So we're just going to do some, some cross grain rabbits on this maple, these maple scraps. So first one is, this is like a three quarter skewed rabbit plane. So this would be typical of like uh, small joinery. Um, this could be like uh, the, uh, a tenon pin or something like that. So the shaving curls very nicely. There's plenty of clearance for everything. Nice clean cut, that looks good. This is typical of what I would use that plane for. So now I have the larger one. This has uh, also been cut to length, but hasn't been trimmed or sanded yet. So this would be basically the same thing, except uh, I would use it for larger tenons or uh, uh, timber framing, stuff like that, much larger. Uh, tenons and uh, see how this one works. Okay, everything clears nicely, nice thin shaving. this way and clean it up a little bit. Looks good, nice and clean. Okay, now we have the hybrid plane, the one that was laminated from three pieces. This one's cut to length. The, uh, the blade and the wedge have been tuned. So, this one I haven't used yet at all. Let's see how this one works. Feels real nice. This one's a slightly heavier cut. I could probably work on this blade a little bit more, but it's cutting real good. All right, 
chips are starting to jam up a little bit. So on a longer cut, that might be a problem, which I knew I might have to address at some point in time. These uh, these escapements are much much smaller on my planes than they are on the originals. So these may have to be enlarged at some point if uh, there's too much jamming. This is a real small cut. So if this was a foot or too long for some reason, you're gonna, you might have problems with jamming. Now these are not finished or waxed or sanded yet, so that's, that remains to be seen about how they're going to perform on a larger cut. But right now, the performance is fine. So let me go to the dado plane now. I'll set that one up. So let's try the dado plane out on some maple and we'll go cross grain. It's on the rough side. There's probably there's probably some things you could do to the plane to uh, to adjust for that. I don't know what that would be. Doesn't really look like chatter. It might be just the direction of the grain or the way it performs in a hardwood. I'm not really sure, but. Uh, We'll continue on with the testing. Alright, let's finish up the test on this. More messing around, more adjusting. Okay, let me make the uh, let me make the cut a little deeper. So that looks good. You get a full shaving. Clears. That looks good. Good. Nice. It's a very shallow cut. You gotta spend a lot of time tuning the knickers. The knickers have to be, especially the outside one, has to be absolutely flush with the side of the plane. Then this, this side here has to be absolutely flush to the side of the plane. And the same thing with the inside. You need, you need a full, you, you have very little leeway. And then you have to tune. These are unlike a flat bottom, like a smooth plane, because you're relying on the entire width of the blade to make the cut. So you can't have a crown in it and you can't have a low spot you have to have a straight and then you have to set it very shallow so to get all that takes time trust me but you can produce a nice cut so what I did was I shortened the wedge even more the top of the angle right in here is right up against the escapement and then what I did was instead of beveling the end of the wedge I rounded it because a lot of the shaving is hitting this this wedge is parallel or in line with the I guess if the, you would call it the left side of the blade so there's a good portion of the blade to the 
to the right to the left of the uh, or to the right of the wedge and so what I did was I rounded over the face of the wedge so that as those shavings come up they don't get directed to the to the right which is the smaller part of the escapement but to the left or up to the center so that so that you have a less of a tendency to jam, to jam. The only other solution to the jamming problem is to just make the entire escapement bigger and angle it further further out so that it's more of an exaggerated funnel. But what happens is you lose all the mass and the mass of this plane is what keeps it straight and what keeps it stable because it's it's just made out of wood. So uh, this is this is fine. Um, if you're using this for uh, for harder woods, good luck. I can tell you one thing. I have a feeling that. Uh, very few of these that were originally sold in the 1800s, the late 1800s, the early 1900s. These were probably neat things to buy and have on a shelf, but they were a pain in the neck to use. And I think that's why there's a bunch of them that are available that are in such great shape because nobody ever used these. This was just, this just was an exercise in futility. I don't, I don't know why a homeowner, anybody that wasn't a professional, would have a hard time using these. Especially over a hundred years ago when you didn't have the tool steel and the diamond stones and the water stones and the electric light and everything else. I don't know how the hell you would even work with these things. But this one's, this one's looking pretty good. So uh, I think the testing is a success and uh, we'll move on to other things. So let's wrap up this project. Everything's looking good. We'll do a kind of a side-by-side -side comparison with um, my copies and some of the originals. And I, I kind of hesitate to call them copies. But um, for instance, this one is about like three quarters of an inch thick. And uh, what they do on the original ones that are skewed is they make a short wedge and then they skew the profile and they get real beat up because instead of it being square across here it's on an angle and then if you bash the corner with the handle or with the hammer you you lose the profile so I choose not to make my wedges that way I make my wedges longer and I keep the profile square so I'm not going to have that problem. But they are, they are bigger. And I have a feeling that there was a reason why they kept them shorter. Probably so that all your, all your planes, whether they were molding planes or um, skewed planes, all had the same size wedge. And they were able to ship them, store them, display them, carry them in toolboxes without having different length wedges and stuff. So they kept everything uniform but they had to sacrifice the wear and tear. Now I also have a feeling that there was a lot of abs obsolescence involved. The manufacturers probably didn't care that after a couple of years this would get bashed up because then somebody would just buy another plane or whatever. They didn't really care. So, but for me, I choose to make my wedges this way. So that's the, that's the small one. Then the next size one is the laminate plane that I made. It's got the um, the uh, the plastic boxing in the corner so that's what that one looks like right and uh, same thing with the wedge now on these I beveled the sides of the shank on the blade and uh, I think there's really no reason to do that it's too much work I did all this stuff with the blades by hand I did very little bench grinder work most of it was done with the hacksaw and files and uh, especially for doing four planes, it's just way too much work. If I was doing one and I chose to bevel the shank, I might think about doing that again, but, but it's really, it's a waste of time. So that one was like basically, this one was the one that I have that's comparable with. So um, 
all of these original planes had different side sized right side escapements and left side escapements. So what I did was, because I was, I'm not really following any form or pattern, was I just picked my own design for each kind of escapement. So for instance, these are both more or less the same size. And then I did whatever I could on the other side to create something that I thought was decorative. And my main uh, theme with these left side escapements was to keep enough mass in here so that the, the body of the plane would be remain stable. So uh, the other thing that I chose to do is not make these pockets for the blade. I think they did this so that the length of the blade could go up into this area and then you would have plenty of material to sharpen and let the blade get shorter like this one now is much shorter than it probably was originally and I'm not too concerned about that either because it, it creates stress in the blank uh, one of these like uh, this one's got a, a stress crack in it because of this this slot for the blade so I'm not really interested in that uh, I don't want to start off creating that problem because um, chances are this blade is going to take me about a hundred years to make it short enough to where it won't be usable and if I ever do get in that position if I live to be 190 years old then what I'm going to do is just make another blade instead of modifying the plane it's not going to be a big deal uh, so there's that and then let's see I have this plane here so the original has a very large escapement and uh, same thing. I didn't want to. I didn't want to copy that. So mine is a lot smaller. But what's probably going to happen is this may or may not jam. And if it does jam, uh, I can just widen it at some other point in time. The rule of thumb that I've kind of discovered is the wider the cut you're making with these planes, the shorter the wedge has to be uh, in relation to the front of the blade and the wider the escapement has to be. So for your for a for a very small plane like this where you might be just doing little profiles and molding and stuff like making your own molding you could have a very long wedge and you could have a very small escapement can you and your the mass of your shavings is going to be pretty small it's not going to be a big deal. Once you start getting into like a one inch cut like this one, that's probably why they gave you such a big escapement so that there would be no problem with jamming when you bought this. You wouldn't want to curse the guy that sold you this plane. On the other hand, the obsolescence that was built in was once you use this a few times, if this thing twisted or curled or went out of alignment because of the escapement, then you just bought another one and they didn't care about that. So I'll deal with the issue of the jamming in the future if it comes up. Uh, in the meantime what I did with this one was I sanded the escapement. All the escapements are sanded to 220 and then this one I applied wax to the escapement and to the tip of the tip of the wedge so uh, I'm trying to reduce as much jamming as possible uh, if I ever pick this up and use it in the future. So um, I think that this is an archaic plane. I can't understand why the heck anybody would buy this and use it. Uh, it's a very wide cut and uh, it's very hard to push. So um, I think smaller sizes are more practical in this configuration for a dado plane. Which leads me into the other blank that I have. I'm probably going to use this one to make a, uh, a smaller dado plane. And then the other blanks that I had I wouldn't really learn anything and I don't really need to add to my collection to like one inch skewed rabbit planes. But I will address these blanks at some later time. But for the purposes of this project I don't think I need to get involved in that. So a couple of the areas where I had some issues that I think are worthwhile going over was the um, the skewed wedge, wedge pockets. I found them very difficult to control the width of my layouts 
and uh, the actual chisel work and the float work. So that's that's something to keep in mind. Um, I think probably as a rule of thumb I would want to start out with any wedge po pocket that I had laid out I would want to use a chisel and do all my work 1 16th minimum 1 16th smaller than what I ended up what I wanted to end up with uh, just because everything tends to drift out and become wider um, the other thing is let's see uh, oh, I went over that so if I'm starting a project like this if I was doing just one plane I would start out with a full set of chisels as sharp as I could make them now the problem that I had with this which I didn't really address and I should have I should know better is that I should have continually resharpened my chisels it's going to add to the precision of your work as you go along so I would say start with a fresh set of chisels freshly sharpened and then keep them sharp throughout your work it's going to make things a lot easier uh, what I discovered was that I think that um, the floats that I made in my float video these were set at uh, 1 8 spacing and I think they're too coarse for this kind of work especially on skewed pockets for your joiner planes and your flat bottom planes with big wedge pockets and stuff well, this is all fine you could just make a wider if you got a two inch wedge if it's two and a sixteenth it's no big deal but in this kind of stuff to get the precision that I thought I could get these floats are too coarse this one just by accident because I intended to use this as a saw uh, I set at three thirty seconds spacing and I think that that might be appropriate for floats like this to do work on the skewed rabbit planes so I will explore that at some other time and then I just wanted to mention that I took the 332nd spacing off a of blueprint scale and that's that's how I got that spacing so I will explore that at some other point in time but these, these are not giving me the kind of performance that I want for these kinds of wedge pockets um, your blades need to be very sharp uh, that goes without saying for most of your planes but you when you're making planes it's doesn't do you any good to do all this kind of work and then have a blade that's not going to give you the kind of results that you want so spend the time tuning the blades getting them as sharp as you can so that when you run your tests so you pick these up a week or a month from now this thing is ready to go um, in terms of your blanks you want to use the best blanks that you can and generally I try and do that in this case what I found was that I had some blanks that were just a little bit longer than what I needed for these planes and I chose to use those rather than longer blanks that were better because those blanks I want to use for other planes I can't make the blanks longer so for instance this is like a nine and a half inch plane so if I had a 15 inch blank I could make a longer plane out of it rather than throwing away a good portion of it to make this one so just the rule of thumb is you want to use the best blanks that you can um, pretty much that's about it these things came out very nice they're going to be very usable um, the only one that I really question the value of even owning really is the dado plane because it's an archaic design um, I think for this one being one inch um, I don't even see why you would want one that wide I think three quarters half inch three eighths uh, one quarter would be more appropriate but in general these these new ones that I made are going to be excellent user planes for anything anything you want you're going to be able to you're going to be able to do modern work with high value with these planes that you're making yourself so there's nothing to be afraid of 
this is all stuff if you have a modern shop and modern equipment um, anybody with general woodworking skills should be able to handle these kinds of planes if I can do it anybody can do it so you folks thank you for watching the series thank you for subscribing to the channel thank you for pressing like because that helps with the algorithms and the analytics on the videos and uh, you folks stay strong we got some more stuff coming up this is not gonna end anytime soon we're gonna keep making stuff alright everybody thank you